There's family fun for everyone at the Utica Zoo. Hi everyone, it's Kathleen from the Utica Zoo, and today we are going to be talking all about frogs. And this is actually a really important topic this month because April is actually Frog Month. Um, so we're going to be learning all about frogs and different kinds of animals like frogs today. In my hands, I have Veruca here. Veruca is what we call an African bullfrog, or sometimes they're also called the pixie frog. And true to their name, they do live in Africa. They usually live kind of in the southern part of Africa. And they actually live in kind of a strange habitat for frogs. Most frogs you can find in rainforests, streams, um, ponds, places like that. And they do sometimes live in waterways, but they actually do sometimes live also in places like savannas, um, a little bit drier climates. And they can survive that way for a very special adaptation that they have. Now frogs like these guys, since they live in a very different climate, they don't go away in the winter time like our frogs do. Our frogs that live around here, they tend to go underground in the winter and they stay there until it warms up, it's nice and warm for them to come out. But these kinds of frogs actually go away when it gets very dry, when it's the dry season, and come out again when it's the rainy season, there's a lot more water around. Um, so these guys do something that we like to call estivation. It's a little bit different from hibernation because they kind of do it at a different time of the year for different reasons. Now, frogs are very important animals, and one of the things that's very important to a frog is actually water. And that's one of the main reasons why these guys can't stay out when it's a really dry habitat. Being a member of the frog family or being in the family of animals that are like frogs, we sometimes refer to them as amphibians. And that includes frogs, toads, salamanders, all those kinds of animals. And a lot of people, when they see a frog or see a salamander, they might think that it's actually a reptile, but they actually belong to the amphibian group. And the thing that makes them different is that amphibians spend part of their life in the water and part of their life on the land. So when the frogs come out of estivation, these guys do, um, they have to find a nice watery habitat so that they can lay their eggs. And that's very important because when their eggs hatch out, they're born as tadpoles. They spend that first part of their life in the water, and then they go through a change. They go through a metamorphosis where they grow and change into frogs. So it does take a little bit of time to do that, but that's why water is so important to them. Not only is it important for them to raise their young, but water is also very crucial for frogs in general. Frogs have a very, very special type of skin. We sometimes refer to it or call it permeable. And what that means is they get a lot of the oxygen, a lot of the air that they need to breathe, through their skin. Their skin is very absorbent, kind of like a sponge. So they can absorb water through their skin, they can absorb oxygen through their skin, and being wet is very important for a frog because it helps them to do that. It helps their, their oxygen to flow a little bit better through their skin. Now, one of the tricky problems with frogs, because they have such special skin and because they're so different than many other animals, is that unfortunately frogs a lot of the times are very, very affected by pollutants things in the waterways that can cause them to get very, very ill. And sometimes frogs are one of the first animals to be affected by this. And for that reason, a lot of scientists, a lot of researchers study frogs when they go and look at ponds and streams and different ecosystems. Because if frogs aren't very healthy, if a pond is full of frogs that just doesn't look very good, or maybe the frogs are having trouble changing into frogs, maybe they're all still tadpoles, that might be a sign that there's something wrong with that ecosystem. There's something wrong with that pond or that stream that we can't see. So frogs are pretty important important to people. Not only that, but frogs are actually used for a lot of research for people too. Sometimes we use them for medical research and other things, so they are helpful to us in a lot of different ways. Not to mention, frogs love to eat bugs, and if we didn't have frogs around, we'd be living in a world full of bugs, and it would set the whole ecosystem off balance, which is not a good thing either. Unfortunately, about 33% of all amphibians in the world today are in um, danger of becoming extinct or in danger of becoming um, threatened. So there are a lot of frogs that are in trouble. Um, and one of the easiest ways or one of the um, good things that you can do to help a frog is if you have a pond, if you have a stream in your backyard, any place that's a really good habitat for a frog or any other kind of amphibian, it's always really important to make sure those places stay clean. So you might be able to um, help um, with a uh, cleanup of a lake or a stream or a pond, that's always a good thing. Um, you know, so it's a good place for them to live and that's one of the ways that we can all kind of help. And even just making sure that we throw our garbage away the right way, that we recycle the right way, because a lot of the times garbage and recycling that winds up on the road or winds up in the grass, 
can get washed away in a rainstorm and wind up right in the ponds, the rivers, the streams where these guys like to live. So that even just making sure we dispose of our trash properly is another really great, easy way to help guys like frogs. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today, and I hope you guys enjoyed our talk about Veruca and about amphibians. Um, be sure to check out our website at unikazoo.org slash kazoo for lots of fun frog activities that you can do at home. And now that it's April, if you do have a spring um, or a pond behind your house or anywhere nearby, you might even hear some of our local frogs starting to sing and starting to make their noises. Um, and you can definitely start to learn all the different kinds of frog sounds, all the different calls that they make, and help to identify those frogs too. So it's kind of a cool activity that you guys can do as home as well. Thank you guys so much.